everyone. Oh, so I decided to try a new space today and I am downstairs on my patio. I have my big umbrella to give me a little shade. So, um, you know, it's supposed to be hot again here in St. Louis today, which is always fun, right? Um, yeah, it's always fun. Anyway, today, today we're going to look at um, a few more tatting things. So I want to show you a Josephine ring. And I want to talk to you about the mignonette stitch. And um, I also want to show you a way to um, put the tail in as you start a ring. If you're starting a ring, um, you know, say you're like partway through your uh, piece and you run out of thread, so you're starting a new shuttle and you need to like hide the end. I, I'm gonna show you guys how to hide the end at the beginning of a ring. And it's something that uh, Gina Brummett actually taught me back when I um, was a Lafayette lace maker in Lafayette, Indiana. And she's no longer with us, but the things that she has taught me carry on. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, um, so those are the three kind of tatting things that we're going to take a look at today. And then I want to talk about socks. And Tina is moving on Friday. So I am going to be back on Friday um, to kind of start my sock series. And um, we'll get into that and, and what to expect with that a little later on. But I am going to um, turn the camera down and just get right into the tatting portion of this and um, you may hear the ducks in the background because I'm kind of down in their area on the patio so they are um, you know wandering around and they're going back and forth to their pool and they're talking to me because uh, usually I sit down here with them in the evening with Ina and we play and um, and so the ducks think that I'm down here to play with them right now which is really entertaining so anyway, um, let's go ahead and I'll turn that and we'll look at some tatting. And there's her new, uh, fun new swing set that we are still working on and putting together. And there's, there's all the duckies. See the duckies? They're down here getting their water, you know, gross because that's what duckies do. Um, all right. So I just, I've put out, um, a new piece of fabric. So this was the little, just the little thing that we've kind of been working on where I've, I've been showing, demonstrating how to do different things as we went along. So um, how to make rings and picos and join and how to make a chain and just all kinds of, of stuff that we've learned how to do. So I thought uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you was how to make that Josephine uh, ring. And the key to a Josephine ring is that you only use the front half or the back half of a stitch throughout the entire ring. So you don't make a full stitch. Um, remember when we make a full stitch, you do the first half and the second half, right? So that's first half and second half. And I'm just finger tatting with the end of this because um, I'm demonstrating. So this is this is a full stitch. All, everything that we've done before has been full stitches. So watch this little bit of magic. If you make a mistake and you're finger tatting, you can pull your stitches out. Oh, I love that because remember tatting is just making stitches on a core thread. All right, so um, there are some people who really like to do just the front half and that's fine. So you're just gonna make the front half of the stitch Bring your thread over and pass it under, ah, can't get my tail, under and over, there we go, back through the loop, under and over and back through the loop, and you would just keep doing first halves all the way around to make your ring. I, though, I, I kind of prefer um, just back half because um, it's a little bit faster and, and it's just a personal preference. It is going to um, snug up under our um, last little join here because here we did a lock join at the end of a mock pico. But um, just make a bunch of back halves. 
So just dangle it in front and then back half, back half, back half. Um, and when you get enough of these in a ring, so sometimes it might be, you know, 12 halves or 20 halves or four halves, whatever it is. Okay, probably not four halves. It's usually a larger, larger number. Then you would just pull this tight and you would close your ring and it makes this really cool, makes this really cool Josephine ring. Um, but before I close this one, I wanted to show you another variation. So this is if I, I'm pulling all my stitches really tight and just pretend that I've closed that ring all the way down. There, we pretend that I've closed it. Oh, look, it's a Josephine ring, right? We're pretending. Um, but let me pull my core thread out. So watch this, we'll undo all that work. Boom, there it went. Okay, so if I pull my core thread out and I do this, um, then let's say I'm doing those back halves and we'll do the first one pretty tight. Do the first one pretty tight. But now um, let's put a little extra, little extra in so that it's almost like having a little extra pico in between our stitches. And what you'll see is that you can make sort of this fluffy, floopy, loofy, I know I'm using made up words, Josephine ring. But when you pull these together, you get a totally different effect just because you've kept that little extra, that little extra thread in here. Look at how fun that is. That nice, soft, open loop. So now I am going to close this all the way down. See what happens? There we go. So there we have that Josephine ring, but we gave it just a little extra dimension by leaving a little extra thread in between those stitches so that you have a little bit more of a fluffy, loopy Josephine ring. I think that's kind of fun. So just to um, different ideas. You can pull them all tight so that um, you have a nice tight ring. You can do just front halves. You can do just back halves. You just have to be consistent. Um, or you can make it a little looser, a little fluffier um, by putting in a little extra uh, start to your picos. All right. Now then, here I'll, I'll leave that out while I while I swap things. So there was, there was our little Josephine ring with extra pico length. So mm -hmm. let's say um, we're going to do the mignonette stitch. So usually when you do the mignonette, um, it's a method where it's just single shuttle tatting. And you're going to connect it to, um, it's where you're connecting a ring to a large pico or bare thread and uh, the ring slides on the thread. Um, you can use it on a straight edging or you can make it round. Um, and mini net is a way to um, kind of make an open groundwork with these, these teeny tiny little, um, teeny tiny little rings, teeny, teeny tiny little rings. I feel like mine is very untidy, <laughs> so I don't do it very often because it. I just feel like it's really untidy, just really untidy, um, and maybe I just need to practice more. But what happens with um, these little mini net rings is you essentially make um, uh, like one little ring with some picos on it and some single stitches in between. And then you build them out, and each of these is a little ring, just a little ring that that's one stitch. It's a, like a one stitch ring. Um, sometimes a two stitch ring. It's not. They're very very small, right? Super small. And uh, the idea is that you use these bare thread spaces then to move between them. So you can use a pico gauge. Um, I'm usually too lazy to use a pico gauge, so I just kind of fake it. And um, if I'm going to show you this, um, usually what you would do is you would leave a tail and then you would climb up out of it with um, split rings. But 
I think I'll just show you like the idea of it. So, because I'm not doing a big project, I suppose I could do some kind of project where we've got, you know, anyway, let's make these little teeny tiny rings and leave a space and Anyway, usually what you're doing is you're making like one pico or you're making, you know, two stitches and you're attaching it to another pico and you can kind of just do like one at a time and do these little itty bitty rings and move them along. So, there's little, little itty bitty, anyway, I should properly do this. All right, let me cut this off. So if we're going to start this properly, then we have to start with a small ring. Um, so, and we need to leave some there. Need to leave a tail. So let's say we're going to, uh, oh, we gotta leave a longer tail than that. Mm. So, I don't know, let's do maybe five picos. So if you remember how to do your picos, then that's the space between your stitches. So there's one pico, there's two picos, and I'm going to pull on that a little bit. They don't match because I'm not using a pico gauge, so that is the disadvantage not using a Pico gauge. Three. Uh, I gotta get more thread off this. Four. Oh yeah, they're like really funky. So your Pico should be all the same size when you are doing the start to a little mignonette item. One, two, three, four, five. Mine are not, they are very sad, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull our little ring closed. Yep, here we go. And then we're gonna use the uh, tail and the um, shuttle thread and we're just going to make a little Mock Pico. Shoot, hang on. It's gonna be hard to see this Mock Pico, but I'll hold this one. Oh, these Tapsy shuttles. This is a giant shuttle, by the way. Giant shuttle! But it does nicely hold my, um, my thread. And, oh my goodness, that's like enormous. Okay, let's see if I can move that a little bit. I'm gonna grab a crochet hook. I did remember to bring the crochet hook set down just for, th just for this purpose. Just for this purpose. That's slightly better. Okay, this is really sad. All of these should be the same size. Um, but I didn't pay enough attention. So we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. So we've made our little mock pico and we've tied it and then um i'm going to use um my tail thread to like be my little um actually i need to use my shuttle thread and then use my tail to fill in I'm gonna use my shuttle thread and I'm just going to make a little split ring. So we learned split rings earlier. Um, but remember when we're using our split rings that we don't flip the stitch on the opposite side because we want this to close. And I'm just making this itty bitty little um, split ring and I just want, you know, two two little stitches. So I have one regular stitch, one split ring stitch, and that's why you need a long tail. This one's not really long enough, but it's long enough for our purposes. And we're going to close this and make this itty bitty, 
This is why I hate these. They are so hard to close. So hard to close. That's going to look really ugly. Oh, well. So there we go. We've closed our first little fake... Well, it's not a fake. It's a real split ring, but it's only a two-stitch split ring. So that's what we're going to do. These little two-stitch split... Or these little two-stitch rings all the way around. So you have to have some bare space. So you kind of have to decide how much space you want between um, your rings because that's going to determine how your piece grows. Sometimes um, if you're following a design, they might have a um, specific, there we go. They might have a specific um, length for you to measure out. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and make our little ring. And remember we talked about um, when you join, that's what I'm doing right now. When you join, you can decide if this is the first half of a stitch or if this is um, not a stitch. And I always use it as the first half of a stitch, but when it comes to mignonette, um, I treat it differently. And the key is just that you are consistent. So when it comes to mignonette, I always treat this as a not stitch. It's just a join. So it's not really there. And then you close. So here's our tiny little two stitch ring. Although it's kind of two and a half stitches since I'm not counting the join, but you know, that's fine. All right, and we're just gonna go around and leave those bare spaces. That bare thread between is the important part of this. And you wanna be somewhat consistent. Then we'll join here. So, oh, I still have one person watching. That's good. So we're going to join. And again, I'm treating this as you aren't actually a stitch. So I'm going to make a full stitch after it. And then close. And you can see I was not consistent, so I have a really long loop here and a not so long loop here. Oh, and we just keep going around. So I'll try to make this quick and not too painful for my two people. Oh, I have two people watching now. Yay. So I'll leave a space and then I'm going to join again. And because I'm using the Tatsy and I don't have a pick on the front of it or a hook on the front of it, that's why I am using my crochet hook there. And I'm just going to tighten this join down. And again, I'm just going to pretend that it's not actually a stitch. There we go. And then close that up. And it looks extra ugly in this giant thread as far as I'm concerned. Maybe you'll like it. Okay, and so we just keep going around and we just keep doing that. And then on the next round, you would do another split ring, build your way out, and then do the next round. And split ring, build your way out, and do another round. And uh, if I didn't leave quite so much bare thread between my spaces, then it would look better. But anyway, that's the start of a mini net. Um, item if you're doing one in the round. Um, this is also kind of the start if you're making squares. Um, you just treat the corners a little bit differently than you do when you are just going around and around and around. But um, yeah, that's the start of mini net. So okay, now we can ignore this one for a little bit. And the last thing, the last thing that I wanted to show you was how to um, hide your ends when you were starting a piece. So let me grab my other tatsy tatting shuttle here. Okay, now then. Let's say that you are starting a piece or um, you know you had you had to uh, add thread. So when you make the first half of your stitch, if you fold the tail back under, so this is kind of what it looks like, 
you fold that tail back under right here and you tighten that stitch down. You are burying the tail within the core of your stitch. And sometimes I just take the tail and shove it up through and sometimes I hook it with the crochet hook. And I'm just gonna hold it along with the core thread. This is also how you can carry colors along so that you can use them. Um, you can hide them. It's a kind of padded tatting. So here's if I'm gonna use my crochet hook and pull it through. Just hide it, hold it with that core. And then again, on the second half of this, just pull your tail through, just like that. And we are hiding the start of that tail so that uh, you don't have to go back in and figure out how to weave this in later. And I usually, um, I usually put my tail under at least three or four uh, stitches, but you can do more if you want. It just depends a little bit on your pattern and how big your next ring is, or your next chain for that matter. So there we go. We learned how to bury our end, and I showed you that little bit of mignonette, and we talked about Josephine rings, so lots of fun there on the, the tatting front today. All right, I'm gonna flip this back around and we're gonna talk socks. Um, socks and what I am planning for the sock series starting with Friday because I will be here Friday um, since Tina is moving. All right. Close up of Kelly. Okay. And oh, it's a little bit, a little bit off, but uh, it's all right. So, my peoples, um, I really like socks. I'm really in the mood to make socks. Um, in fact, I am, I am working on, um, I think my third pair of socks in three weeks because I really like making socks right now. They're just, it's just, it's just what I'm in the mood for. And I'm not even making fancy socks. I'm just making stockinette socks. Um, you know, Ina is not super excited to give me any crafting time. So uh, making stockinette socks allows me to at least knit a little bit most days. So if you want to join in the fun and you want to make socks, I'm going to do a whole series starting with um, cast-ons. So I'm going to show you how to cast on and do um, like magic loop. And I'm going to show, and so I, and I have different needles here. So I have um, Haya Haya's, I have signatures, um, I have the Chaogu, what is this, the twist, twist mini interchangeable set. So tiny needles. Um, and the red cables that, that Tina loves so much. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do magic loop. And um, I also have these guys, which are the um, Haya Haya Sharp, the flyers, the flexi flyers, something like that. Whatever these are, the tiny little um, interchangeable, not to interchangeable, these are just the tiny little fixed ones. They do have an interchangeable one now though, so if you really want the interchangeable sets, we carry both the interchangeable set and the fixed sets for these guys. Um, and then my preferred method, of course, is the double pointed needle. So I actually have my DPNs in here. Um, but you can use whatever one you want, and I'm going to show you how to cast on with double pointed needles. I'm gonna show you how to do it with magic loop. Um, I will try to have enough yarn ready to go to do two at a time. And then I'll also show you the, um, hi, hi, <coughs> excuse me. My allergies are really bad right now. Like really bad, they've been really bad all year long. Um, I think the trees are trying to kill me. That's all I can say. Anyway, um, so here's, I mean, here's one, one pair that I made and this was my crazy pair um, that doesn't match for my friend Heather. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of different cast-ons on several different needle types. So that's what I'm doing Friday. We're talking about just the cast-on and we're talking about just the different ways to do it. Um, if you want to play along, you can grab a skein of yarn. I'm gonna use some Lilliput and make another pair of socks. Um, this one happens to be barking up a tree. I, I love Lilliput, I love Crystal. Um, maybe she'll watch this. 
I don't know. But I love lily put, um, I love the sock yarn, and that's what I'm going to use um, to make another pair of socks kind of along with you guys so I can show you all these pieces. Um, but Friday, I'm going to be here because Tina is moving, so, um, and once she gets moved, she's going to open the shop back up for appointments, um, so you'll be able to come in one at a time or, you know, small groups and do shopping at the new place. Um, she said it's going to have a big area where she can, like, set up the little shop again, um, and she'll do appointments, so that's kind of cool. And uh, I think she said something about maybe trying to host a, hit, a knit night once in a while at the house. Just depends on um, the space and what people are doing and, and what's going on in the outside world. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, what you need if you want to knit along with some socks, you need some yarn. Preferably fingering weight. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're going to use, it doesn't really matter which one you use because I'm going to teach you about gauge after we get through um, kind of this whole series of how to cast on. Um, then I will tackle gauge and that's a little bit backwards, but I do want to address the many different ways that you can make your socks. So you can kind of look at what I'm doing and you can make a decision that fits for you if you've never made socks before. Um, and then we'll talk about gauge uh, on the following Monday and um, we'll look at ribbing choices, and I'm just going to make a basic sock. I'm not making anything fancy. We're going to do um, either a one by one or a two by two rib, and that means one knit, one purl, or two knits, one purl. You could also do um, a two by one, so you could do two knits, one purl, whatever makes you happy. Um, but Monday we'll look at um, gauge and the cuff, and then as we move along um, through our series, I'll try to make sure that I have heels ready to go on Wednesday and then um, we'll talk about toes the next week and I'll talk a little bit about toe up versus top down uh, that next Monday. So Friday I'm going to be here and we're going to do again the cast ons and look at the different um, ways that you can knit your socks and um, how to cast on with the various needles and I'll be demonstrating. And then Monday we'll look at gauge and we'll look at the cuff so you can get your socks started. And then Wednesday, um, hopefully we can look at heels and we'll talk about that. So that is my plan for the moment and hopefully um, that works for everybody else. Um, don't forget, Slow Crawl is ongoing. Um, some of our shops are opening back up. So if you are in the Pacific Northwest, you can travel and go see the shops. Um, if you are not in the Pacific Northwest, remember you can keep virtually crawling. Lots of fun there. Don't forget the experiences. Um, we haven't seen a lot of those yet, so uh, you know the pool is very small. You could easily win a prize because there's not a lot of people who have posted their experiences yet, and we are going to be pulling one very soon. Um, what else is going on? Oh, free shipping, seventy-five dollars. That's always, always free shipping if you order at least seventy-five dollars at the Black Sheep Fiber Emporium website. Um, so there's that, and yeah, there's just all kinds of fun things going on. Um, I'm gonna leave you guys for today. I will see you Friday, um, the usual time, about two o'clock central. And um, you know, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, I found out that one of my friends who has rabbits. Um, is in the hospital with pneumonia and blood clots and uh, and she tested positive for COVID-19 so it is still out there it is still serious and um, you know I really hope that she pulls through so cross your fingers for her wear your masks wash your hands and stay healthy um, keep crafting and I will talk to you guys Friday